Thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, uh, as all participants, I also want to thank organizers for uh, inviting me. Uh, so regarding your uh, uh, questions, um, uh, as my uh, dear colleague from Montenegro was describing, uh, uh, central banks are in quite difficult and challenging situation, I have to say, because uh, uh, the crisis which happened, uh, uh, as it is called often, uh, once in a century crisis, um, gave us uh, headaches which we have not thought before. Uh, for example, if I uh, talk in terms of macroeconomics, uh, in Georgia, for example, we experienced a shock from both sides, from uh, supply side and from demand side. And this is something very difficult to address because usually central banks uh, address and uh, take actions against demand pressures. So when uh, there are factors which are given to the economy, like when oil prices increases and the uh, country does not produce oil, cry or, 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 or oil there is um, uh, no way uh, not to allow prices to increase. And then price increase, uh, if it comes with secondary rounds, then it is very difficult to deal with. Uh, Georgia, uh, relatively small country, uh, was damaged quite a lot by pandemic. Um, uh, the tourism sector has becoming uh, very active in Georgia, contributing more and more to the economy. Uh, in 2019, before the crisis, just to give you, give you one number, about 19% of GDP uh, flew to Georgia in terms of foreign exchange from the tourists. So population 3.7 million in 2019, uh, Georgia um, uh, received about 9 million tourists. So uh, the 2020 was supposed to be even much, much uh, better, but unfortunately happened what happened. So uh, let me give you like three very briefly lessons what we learned and what we think should be done in the short term by the central bank. First of all, uh, we central bankers have to make sure that we fix the roof while the uh, sun is still shining. That's absolutely necessary. Uh, in case of Georgia, we started to address uh, quite a number of structural issues before pandemic. First of all, this is high dollarization of the Georgian economy and the financial sector, um, as, uh, which uh, uh, can be quite damaging when crises uh, like that happened. It has it, it, its roots. I could talk about it for hours. So there is uh, no time for this. But we took as market friendly as possible macro, uh, macro prudential measures to reduce dollarization in the country, which did result in uh, quite better situations than we would have had. Uh, this is one. Um, there was an issue of very high growth of consumer lending in Georgia. It was skyrocketing, and we had to somehow put a break on it uh, because uh, indebtedness of population has been reaching very high. So we did it, and it really helped us. The second, um, uh, not to close eyes on the problem. Let's make sure, we have to make sure, central bankers, and we know what's going on in financial sector. What are the real balance sheets of commercial banks? If we try to present good balance sheets, and in fact, if it's not the case, uh, these uh, damaged loans, uh, non-performing loans, will not go anywhere. So they need to be addressed. So we have to make sure that we know this. Fortunately, again, for Georgia, we were in quite good situation. Our non-performing loans were the the smallest that we ever had. It was just 2.3% of banking portfolio. So we, we uh, dealt quite well with this. But of course, some loans were impaired, some loans were damaged, and we have to make sure that we know what it is, and we know at this point what it is. And the third, we have to make sure that we turn challenges into opportunities. And let me explain what it means. Um, COVID pandemic, in fact, turned out, is turning out, I and mean, it's not over yet, unfortunately, is turning out to be disruptive. It is going to make some changes in our everyday life. Uh, everyday life. You know, we, we have been in so many meetings of Zoom or WebEx or uh, Microsoft that I, 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 I guess, like myself, you hate 
uh, to have this kind of meetings. And actually, uh, I was uh, so glad then when I was invited here because finally I have a chance to talk to people face to face. And uh, it's really, really good <laughs> to, to be back like that. Um, so, uh, but, but I mean, what also showed us, especially in the financial system, and actually that, that was the only system which was working in Georgia, is that we need to make sure that we support digital economy. We support transformation. And I mean, it cannot be done with just with one sector. It should be ecosystem in, 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 in all directions of the economy. Again, nobody wants crisis. Nobody wants crisis, but unfortunately they happen, and they, they happen from different sides. So we have to support as much as possible, not just because if something like that happens again, we are ready which also is the case, unfortunately, we have to be ready, but to make sure that uh, this kind of transformation makes um, uh, economic efficiency uh, much higher and it has an ability to deal with this crisis, uh, so crisis like that. Sustainable finance, a previous discussion of panel was very interesting for, for us. Uh, National Bank of Georgia is very active on sustainable finance issues. In 2017, we became uh, a member of Sustainable Banking Network, uh, which is IFC, um, supported initiative. Uh, there are five stages, and we have already reached the fourth stage, which is implementation. We, uh, two months ago, we published our first uh, um, uh, financial sustainability report. We have requested from commercial banks to officially to mandatorily report on ESG, uh, environment, social and governance indicators, uh, because we need to know what's going on in this direction. Um, uh, at the same time, what we saw is that the financial system is quite eager uh, to engage because they understand that there are opportunities. So once we acknowledge the central banks that um, climate-related issues are a source of financial risk, then we share responsibility. Uh, and uh, regulator, uh, system, and borrowers, we are in the same boat now. And so it believes, if we believe that this is the case, we have to do everything to make sure uh, that uh, we, everything we do also has a part which address uh, financial sustainability. So we have a financial sustainable, su sustainable finance roadmap, which has four pillars. And one of the pillars is how to direct flows into a uh, sustainable uh, finance sector. We, we are a leader in a, in a region, Caucasus and Central Asia, South Caucasus and Central Asia in this direction. And uh, we will continue uh, our, uh, our journey in this direction. Uh, I mean, just imagine that 10 years ago, for example, uh, central bankers talking about uh, climate, right? Most likely they would not. And when I was a parliament uh, uh, presenting my annual report, a uh, number of parliamentarians asked me, what are you talking about? Are you Minister of Environment or are you a central bank governor? And uh, of course I explained what's the reason and why have to we make sure that uh, this is very important for financial stability. And financial stability then is, of course, important for sustainable growth. And uh, last question you asked me. Uh, like Turkey, I mean, we are neighboring countries, and we, like Turkey, we are between East and West. Uh, uh, we are Asians and we are Europeans, and we want to take as much benefits from this as uh, possible. Um, uh, in the past, I mean, we have very good example of Excellent cooperation. Uh, there is a Pilisi Baku Jehan uh, uh, um, uh, pipeline which uh, delivers uh, oil from Azerbaijan via Turkey through uh, through Turkey to Europe, uh, and there is a lot of cargo between Europe um, uh, and uh, South Caucasus, um, uh, and we hope that this will even increase more. I think that what we have to do in the future is that we can, um, in the region, we can implement um, uh, projects which will be in line with um, uh, fin sustainable finance and which will benefit all the countries. And there is one thing which is um, uh, very important. And Turkey is the largest country, country with, country with the largest economy uh, with our neighbors, right? So 
I mean, if, for example, Turkey becomes a financial hub, it's, it, it will be very beneficial for all the countries uh, in the region. Uh, I mean, uh, Islamic banking, for example, in Turkey is, uh, is uh, a very interesting uh, topic, and we can also work uh, with Turkey or other countries uh, in this direction. So I think there are a lot of opportunities uh, in this direction, and uh, we can make it work. And let's also not forget that in case of Georgia, I want to say that we we also have aspirations for EU. We have association, association, associating agreement uh, with Europe, and our aspiration is also NATO. So all these things, uh, I think, will uh, lead us to cooperation. And I'm sure uh, the exams which we already have can be multiplied, and we will have much more um, uh, very good and interesting projects. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so answer to question. Um, about uh, future of central banks. Uh, we have to accommodate central bankers. We need to know more about the climate. We need to know more about technology. We need to make sure that we allow uh, all sources of financial inclusion and uh, access to finance to develop, but at the same time, our main uh, mandate will not change. We have to make sure that we contribute to uh, low and stable inflation, and uh, um, equally importantly, we have to make sure that financial stability is preserved. Otherwise, uh, this will turn into much bigger problems and it will endanger sustainable economic development. Again, disruptive developments, but our mandate changes uh, as, it, uh, as it was before. Thank you.